Hello everybody and welcome to my first YouTube video. I have no idea how this is gonna go. I have no idea if it'll be worth it, but here we are, we're gonna give it a shot. So today's video is more or less going to be kind of an overview of how the second hack in the connect chain came to be. So in a sense, it's a little bit of a, a kind of a driveline history lesson. So if you're not interested in this, I don't know what to tell you, wait another five days and we'll get more into the specific topics that are within the book as well as some of the requests that you guys are sending in. So how did this come to be? I've gotten this question quite a lot over the years and I figured that this video would serve as sort of the official word as to how this happened. So Kyle Bodie on Twitter has said various different times that I've asked three times and four times and however many, it's like a bass fishing story. Like you catch a three pound bass and then like four stories later, it's now 12 pounds. So I don't know exactly how many times I asked, but I definitely asked Mike and Kyle a few times before they finally let me write this. And yes, it was probably over the course of a year, but why, why did I care enough to like write a book? I, I never, it's not something I aspired to as a kid. It's not really something that I ever really wanted to do, but I had my reasons for like getting this project done. So back in 2016, we started like running into problems with scaling remote training. We were trying to come up with something creative that no one else was doing. One of the things that led me into being at driveline baseball in the first place was the fact that I had to learn how to train myself when I was playing. So because of those experiences, I had a lot of experience with trial and error and I was able to parlay that into training players. But when you're a really small business, you don't have that many employees and you're trying to figure out how to scale remote training, it becomes increasingly difficult when the trainer to athlete ratio starts getting skewed. So, you know, if I'm having to train, you know, 50 guys, that's pretty tough. So with the old version of Hacking the Connect Chain, the information was basically all there. However, it was very open-ended because at the time, like we knew the concepts, but there was very little experience training a high volume of players. So we just hadn't had the experience to troubleshoot everything that existed. So 2015, 2016 go by, based on the old version of Hacking the Connect Chain, I wrote a remote training program called Driveline U. And the idea behind this was it was a literal course, almost a precursor to the Driveline certification courses now, that players would go in and I would program their training for 12 weeks, but then they would have to complete homework on various topics that would lead to them learning how to train themselves. And eventually it was kind of like, well, why don't we just make that the product and then people can just buy it and then go do it on their own. The thought scalability was definitely part of the thought process. And then the other part of this was the business had grown and I think we kind of no longer felt like the old version of Hacking the Connect Chain fit the type of work that Driveline was doing. The Driveline was no longer the little business that was up in the grandma's attic of the PL facility. It was much more legitimate. It was becoming much more known around the United States and possibly North America and even other parts of the world. And I personally felt very strongly that we could put out a product that was more representative of that status. And so for me, the project was not only to get a little bit more in depth on pitching mechanics, how to train them through plyo drills. Uh, some of it was also to help you guys learn how to write programs, uh, learn the Google Sheet system, which as business goes was rendered useless after a couple months when track came out. Uh, 
But the idea was that it was going to be a much more modernized version of the information we had, both in terms of how it aesthetically looks inside. I wanted to be futuristic looking so that it would stand the test of time, but then also have like the most advanced information possible. Going back, like knowing what I know now, there's definitely things I would have changed, but I think overall a lot of this still holds up. And so I'm looking forward over the course of the next few weeks, talking about some of this information, hopefully making sense of it, giving you some context as to why I wrote what I did in certain places. And you know, I hope that you guys can get some value out of it.